Good morning and welcome to My Left Ear. This is Carrie Freeman. It's uh, Monday, July 31st, 2023. It's video 167. And I'm filming this from a slightly different direction today for uh, the people that watch me all the time because uh, Petey decided to take a nap on um, the computer stand. I decided to leave him alone. And of course I got all of this set up and then he got off and left, but it's a little different. So you're seeing a different angle of the apartment and me. Uh, this is a left leaning uh, political YouTube channel. I'm the writer, producer, director, I do it all. And I do psychic commentary and the runes to make predictions and read the energy. That's what I do. So welcome and to my regular people, um, after this uh, video uploads, I'm going to do the weekly runes video a little later. So there's another video coming about the reading for the week. Okay. All right. So here we go. When I'm not here doing these videos or doing Patreon, I also have a Patreon channel that's more personal, maybe a little more spiritual, informational, um, hopefully entertaining the Patreon channel. Uh, I am a change agent. That's what I call myself. I help people change. I help people get to another level, um, rid themselves of habits and behaviors. And I also do intuitive coaching, which is just about my plugging into you psychically, my left ear, and helping you solve problems and throwing a few runes. And that's very... Um, I've helped a lot of people through the psychic coaching, by the way. All right, and I'm an author. I've written a book called The Comics Daughter. Uh, the link to that is below, and um, the link to the Patreon channel. So here I go. I disseminate news information, and I add the psychic commentary and the runes, and this is for entertainment purposes only. Um, this isn't written down in my outline, but I just want to share with you. I'm here in Los Angeles and I woke up, looked at the news and there were Christian flash mobs here in Hollywood. And, um, one of them took over Hollywood Boulevard and it was enormous. I mean, I saw vid uh, v footage of it and another area of my city. Now, I don't know, I saw the name of the organizer, I don't really care. Uh, I don't really know if they got, uh, you know, you've gotta, you've gotta get permission <laughs> to do this kind of thing. So we'll, we'll see what happens, but it was, I wanna go, why? You know, some of the world is Christian and some of the world is not. That's never gonna change and why? It's just so culty, but it came, it came kind of close to home because this is where I live. Um, so there was a surprise last week. I'm kind of reviewing last week um, and what we're going into. And the media, as you know, was watching Washington DC. They were waiting for announcement of the um, January 6th indictments, uh, which are coming by the way for obstruction, insurrection. We, we don't have the details of that indictment yet, but that's where everybody's attention was. But there was um, a surprise. Uh, Jack Smith and his team introduced superseding indictments for Florida's document case. So this shocked everybody because everybody was like turning this way and then the real news was this way. Um, and I put a little note in here about Jack Smith. Um, he's a genius, actually, who met the right time. And I do want to give Merrick Garland credit for choosing Jack Smith. I can't imagine anybody more perfect for this gargantuan task. Um, and I was thinking about General MacArthur who was famous for saying, I was made for this war. And that's what I think about Jack Smith. He was made for this war that we're going through right now. 
Um, now, when the superseding indictments hit, um, I came across a tweet by retired professor, law professor, Harvard, Lawrence Tribe, and he called it dynamite. And I just loved that Lawrence Tribe called it dynamite. All right, so the superseding, my screen blew up, it's blowing up more and more. I'm gonna have to take a break and get this computer over to Best Buy or Apple. Um, all right, so the indictment has to do with the Florida documents, espionage, and the assistance that Donald Trump got by his employees to fulfill this. And what it was, what it is, is um, to delete footage at Mar-a-Lago uh, from the security camera um, to prevent it from being turned over to the federal grand jury. Um, so now there's new people that are a part of this. There's a guy named Carlos de Oliveira. Um, he's one of the aides who helped move the boxes for Trump. He's, uh, I think he's head of maintenance at Mar-a-Lago. Um, and the, the federal prosecutors allege that Carlos, along with Trump and Walt Nauta, uh, instructed an unnamed employee who's called witness number four to delete footage from the Mar-a-Lago security camera uh, to prevent it from being overturned. Okay, so witness number four is the only um, employee who's playing it straight there. He's the ID, IT guy, all right? Um, so they approached him and they asked him to delete part of the hard drive or all of it, the video. And this witness number four, whose name is Y-U-S-C-I-L, Yuskil, Yuskil, Taveras, Mr. Taveras, the Director of Information Technology at Mar-a-Lago. Um, well, he went and told the truth. And when he was approached, by Walt Nauta and this Carlos guy, he played, well, it appears that he played dumb and said, I don't even know if I have the, um, uh, if it's legal for me to do it, and I don't even know if I have the ability to do it. Uh, we, we don't know that, but anyway, he went straight to the feds and he shared everything. And um, so, this Mr. Taveras, who played it straight and wouldn't remove the footage, um, has implicated with his testimony all three, Trump, Carlos, and Walt Nauta. Carlos is the maintenance guy. So they all did this for Donald Trump. Um, now, some of Carlos's D. Oliveira's suspected obstruction of the investigation into stolen documents uh, actually happened on Aileen Cannon's watch while she was in charge before she got into trouble. It's interesting. So, D. Oliveira is charged with four counts right now. Uh, conspiracy to obstruct justice. Um, asking Trump employee number four to destroy surveillance footage, uh, corruptly attempting to alter surveillance footage, and false statements made to the FBI uh, at his residence. So it's really serious. And one minute Carlos was innocent and he had a job with benefits, and the next minute Today he's in court for his initial appearance on these superseding indictments, charging him with conspiracy with Trump to obstruct justice. So of course, uh, Trump got Carlos an attorney. Um, I gotta tell you, these guys are really 
stupid. But we don't know what Trump said to them and the promises he made. And of course, they called him the boss. Um, so we, there's a lot going on there. And a lot that Trump will not be able to weasel out of by the way. Uh, so here's the first runes for today. This is what I asked. Will there be a January 6th indictment this week? And it would have to happen on Tuesday, tomorrow, or Thursday, all right? Um, so pick the three runes. And I wanna say, yeah, I think this January 6th indictment is gonna drop this week, whether it be Tuesday, tomorrow, or Thursday. So the breakthrough, I got the breakthrough uh, rune. It's about transformation. It signals a major shift, major change, uh, because a lot of people see everything that Trump is being charged with right now is um, big and it's legitimate, but this January 6th thing is really kind of like the base of the tamale, okay? It's the big one. Uh, so I just wanted to stop and say that. Uh, so there's a radical shift, can no longer live the familiar life in the ordinary way. In each life, there comes a moment, which if recognized, transforms that life forever, and that would be Donald Trump. Then I got the rune of strength. And this is the rune of terminations and new beginnings. And it says, it tells us, the previous life has outgrown itself. And that would be for us as Americans and for Donald Trump. This previous life has outgrown itself. So that means there's change. And it says positive growth and change, however, may create a descent into darkness. And that would be before we come to the light. It makes sense. It's not a shock. We're going into some darkness. We're gonna find out more illegality and shocking criminality, um, and that's the darkness. But then there comes the light, and I do wanna say that. I mean, it's just the truth. Once again, it says, a bond is being severed and a relationship radically changed, all right? Then, I got, lastly, I got the rune of journey reversed, and that would be reversed for Donald Trump. And it puts him on notice to be particularly attentive to personal relationships because people are gonna flip on him. And maybe even these two guys are gonna be convinced instead of going to prison for 20 years that they better tell the truth and they better tell them everything. So runes tell us, ruptures are likely now. Uh, this is probably the thing that's gonna make the top of his head come off, Trump. Requirements for your growth may be disrupted from what you had intended, and that would be for Donald Trump, okay? Uh, and I pulled a clarifier, and the clarifier for this was gateway reversed. And it says, all it says, I'm gonna share with you, is that hasty decisions must be tempered right now. Impulses may cause regrets. So that would be Trump. He's got an impulse problem. He's got a hasty decision problem. He can't control his um, speech, what he says. So yeah, yeah. I think this indictment is going to drop this week. Oh my God, it's really going to rain on him. All right, then I pulled another one. I pulled quite a few runes today. Um, lots of talk about Mark Meadows flipping. Did he flip? Has he flipped? Um, and I pulled the runes and yes, they told me yes. Um, so the first rune I got with did Mark Meadows flip was the rune of disruption okay that's our sort of tower moment it indicates change freedom invention and liberation so with this flipping meadows just detached detached from trump detached from all of it and it says 
there's a need within the psyche to break free from a constricting identification, and that would be his relationship with Trump. And disruption always operates in reversal, uh, and that will be via the testimony and expect disruption. Then I got, about Mark Meadows, separation reversed. And it tells us this is not a time to be bound by old authority, and that would be 45's authority. Consider now what will benefit others, something that nobody in MAGA does, uh, but Mark Meadows being Mark Meadows, he will consider what will benefit him and his wife, his family. You may be called upon to take a radical departure from old ways, meaning he may be called upon to tell the truth. Uh, that's the departure, all right? So yes, Mark Meadows has flipped, according to this reading. Uh, now, another runes question, and this is a biggie. Will the GOP eventually turn on Donald Trump? Certainly doesn't look like it today, does it? However, I got, um, well, I pulled two runes because that's all I needed. Uh, I wanna just tell you up front, I think they will. Um, so the first rune I got was separation, okay? And it's about separating old paths. Well, this is a big, separation, GOP from Trump. Outmoded relationships need to be discarded, okay? That's pretty clear. There's a peeling away, that's pretty clear. And there's a radical severance, and those are not my words. Those are the runes. Then I got possessions reversed, possessions reversed be a lot of loss. So considerable frustration here with possessions reversed. Um, from the trivial to the severe, and we're talking about severe, um, you fall short in your efforts and are compelled to watch helplessly while what you've gained dwindles, Mr. Trump. Doubtful situations are abundant. Doubtful situations are abundant. So at some point, don't know when, and I know that you look at other readers and tarot people, and a lot, it's very difficult to come into timing. I'm sure you hear that from everybody. Uh, so I didn't ask about the timing. Uh, some more things have to happen before this switcheroonie, and it probably will start with the January 6th indictments, because that's going to include a lot of people. Uh, they're looking at all those criminals that were in the hotel room at um, Insur Insurrection Central, and all of them, you know, Flynn and Stone and Giuliani and uh, Bernie Carrick from New York, um, they're coming for them, and they're coming for the uh, insurrectionists in the House and the Senate, all right? So then things start to break up even more. I'm gonna turn to uh, Ukraine for a moment because uh, perhaps we're talking about it less and less and we shouldn't be. Um, now, Ukraine's president, Zelensky, has recently said he expects Russia to resume its attacks on Ukraine's energy system once cold weather returns later this year. They really suffered. He said, it is obvious that this autumn and in the winter, the enemy will try to repeat the terror against the Ukrainian energy industry. We should be ready for this in any case, Zelensky said. He said more, but I shortened it a little bit. Um, at the government and security level, Zelensky said, we will do everything possible, all right? Nearly 40% of the Ukrainian energy system was damaged in Russian missile and drone attacks over this past winter. 
It plunged Ukrainian cities into darkness and cold um, in what Kyiv called a deliberate strategy to harm civilians. The civilians have really been attacked in Ukraine, tortured, just terrible stuff, terrible stuff. Uh, Moscow says it launched the attacks to reduce Ukraine's ability to fight. So here's the runes question. Could Ukraine win the war in 24? And, and that rhymes, win the war in 24. Um, win the war in 24 for the Ukraines. Uh, so I got warrior, warrior, and I'm just going to share it with you because it's very strong. It's pointing up. All right. That's good. That's the warrior upright. And it advises, let the will of heaven flow through you, people. The warrior holds the energy of discrimination. This is a sword-like quality uh, that enables you to cut away the old, the dead, the extraneous. I love this. Enables you to cut away the old, the dead, the extraneous. Patience and perseverance are required, but Ukraine has already been practicing extraordinary patience and perseverance. They don't really need that advice. They're already doing it. Well, then I got the rune of wholeness. Wholeness. It's the impulse towards self-realization. And it indicates a path you must follow. And that is directly to the Ukrainian people. This is the path you must follow. This is also to the United States and NATO. This is the path that we must all follow. Um, and seeking after wholeness is the spiritual warrior's quest. It's a rune of great power making life force available to them, to us. Aim, aim yourself truly, it says, and then maintain your aim without manipulative effort. And basically it says, keep doing what you're doing. Keep doing what you're doing. Um, and then I got, I got the, uh, the rune of separation and when you open, uh, this is upright. When you open the runes book to look up the meanings, um, the first page of separation says retreat and then inheritance, okay? Inheritance. It says, this is a time of separating old paths. Old skins must shed. That would be all the Russian forces need to be shed. Outmoded relationships discarded. Appealing away is called for. Real property is associated with separation. It is the rune of acquisition and benefits. And that means taking back their country. All right. It is time to look closely at what until now they have claimed as their birthright because they have been seriously threatened. This separation called for will free you, that would be the Ukrainian people, to become more truly who you are. It's about taking back their birthright and their country. It looks good. And I am not convinced, this is my left ear, that Putin is going to outlive 2024. I really, and I guess other readers have said something similar. I just don't think he's going to make it. And that may have something to do with this good reading for Ukraine for 2024. And this is just a mention because it's so offensive. Carly Russell was arrested on Friday, this past Friday, and charged with two misdemeanors for making false statements to police. Um, the Hoover Police Department announced during a press conference. Um, and the chief said, the story opens wounds for families whose loved ones really were victims of kidnappings, trafficking, or worse. Um, he, that sheriff, is calling on state legislators to add an enhancement 
to the law because that's all they were able to charge her with. They, that's all they were able to charge her with per the law. So now he wants this expanded. When somebody falsely reports kidnapping or another violent crime, he wants to enhance that. And he might get that um, because what this young woman did and she needs psych help is uh, the, she may have a tremendous narcissism because she wasn't thinking about the real victims the women and a lot of black women that get kidnapped and trafficked and murdered. And she just did this and it was so self-indulgent and um, blah, blah, blah. So um, she could receive up to one year in prison. It was a thousand dollars bond to get her out of jail and two misdemeanors are pushed punishable up to um, eight for each. There's two of them for a cost of $6,000. We don't know how she's going to be charged yet, but she is annoying and she needs help and she's self, um, she's self-centered. I don't know if you heard this, it's just a little bit of humor, but uh, wonderful rep, uh, Eric Swalwell, Democratic got into a major fight, loud yelling fight with Kevin McCarthy on the floor of the house and they were threatening each other and McCarthy like pushed it and it was something like, go ahead, go ahead. You want to fight? I'll fight. And Swallow didn't back down. It was like, yeah. And he put down something and said, let's fight. And then, and then McCarthy backed off. Then McCarthy backed off. He called his bluff. Eric Swalwell is wonderful and he's fearless and I don't know if you know this I've mentioned it before I'm very excited about it I don't know when it's going to come out but I believe it's going to come out in a very timely manner that HBO is uh got a documentary in the works I mean it's in the works right now and it's got a female director who's already won um awards for her brilliant documentation of various movies and stories. And it's about the Ohio wrestling scandal, the sexual um, assaults and harassment of the Ohio students that were part of the wrestling team that Jim Jordan knew about, saw, and has denied. And this documentary by HBO is gonna blow Jim Jordan to smithereens and he's probably quaking in his boots right now and he deserves it. Um, I don't know how many people saw Mitch McConnell failing at the podium where he, he kind of had a brain freeze. That's a non-medical term, I think, uh, or a mini stroke. We're not getting information on this. Um, but here's what's stunning about that. They kind of led him away from the podium when he couldn't speak or answer a question, but they didn't put him into an ambulance. <laughs> they kind of put him to a side, probably gave him some water, and then they marched him out again to prove he was okay. I tell you, I just find that evil. They were more interested in appearances at the podium than this old man's health, whatever happened to him. So uh, listen, I talked about this with a journalist recently and his days are numbered. And this just brings up term limits. We need term limits in the Senate, the House and SCOTUS. Enough is enough. These 90 year old people making policy that can hardly walk and talk um, really makes me angry. Uh, Duh, Santis, that's what I call him now, Duh, Santis. I had, uh, my left ear had this sort of epiphany uh, that a lot of his toxic behavior, nastiness, um, and anger have to do with shame. At the bottom of his core, Ron Duh Santis has extraordinary shame. Something happened to him when he was young. Something happened to him. This is the explanation. 
Um, so, you know, he's fighting revisionist history in the Florida schools. He's making all these mistakes. He can't answer questions properly. He doesn't know how to have a conversation with people. He doesn't know how to talk to children. Just encountered a little girl with like a frosty freeze or something. And he went, well, hi, what's that? And he shakes her hands and she says, oh, it's a tasty freeze or something, whatever it was. And the first thing he says to this little girl, well, that was a lot of sugar in there, isn't it? And she doesn't know what that means, but he tried to shame this little girl about the sugar. He couldn't say, is it good? What flavor is it? No. So I thought about the musical. Oh, I hear Petey knocking over his water. So I'm gonna have water all over my kitchen floor in a minute, um, but I'll clean that up in a second when we're done. Uh, I, was thinking, I was thinking about the musical, The Sound of Music, and I thought, oh my God, the song, How Do We Solve a Problem Like Maria? That's sort of at the beginning of the movie. Well, you know what goes with that perfectly? How do we solve a problem like DeSantis? D-U-H. I'm not gonna sing for you, but I'm gonna plant that in your brain. How do we solve a problem like DeSantis from The Sound of Music? Okay. I am wondering this about DeSantis because we know he's gonna go back to Florida. He's not gonna succeed. He may not even make the debates. We'll see. Uh, it doesn't matter. He's gonna fail miserably at the debates. Um, but it seems like he's, unless there's a, you know, the next election in Florida for governor, what might happen to him, and I haven't thrown the stones yet, but I'm just gonna say this ahead of time, that it appears to me, and I'm not an attorney, you know, that he's committed some pretty crazy crimes where he's pushed the envelope and gone too far. And, and, acts that are against the Constitution. So I wonder if these violations are going to bring him down. That's what I think could happen when he gets back to Florida. And, and when DeSantis, DeSantis, gets back to Florida, he's going to be angrier and nastier than he is already. You know, he's got this prototype like Trump where he is never ever wrong, ever. That's always the mark of someone who doesn't have emotional intelligence and who has pathology in their personality, which he does. And I'm just gonna share with you, a lot of times when I'm around water, my left ear just gets messages. And last week, um, my left ear said this to me, the right thing will happen. So I'm just sharing that with you. The right thing will happen. My left ear. All right, now we're coming to the end. And I have a, a quote. And this came through my left ear too, so I looked it up. Here's the quote. Um, oh, what a tangled web we weave when first we practice to deceive. And this quote is by Sir Walter Scott. Um, I didn't look up his dates, I'm sorry, I wish I had, but you know, he's long gone, 1800s. Uh, but it was attributed to Shakespeare, and it really wasn't Shakespeare, it was Sir Walter Scott. And it reminded me of what's going on right now. Oh, what a tangled web we weave when first we practice to deceive. So now we're seeing this tangled web. And this has to do with narcissism, but there's a little explanation here that I'm going to read to you that was part of this quote. When you lie or act dishonestly, you are initiating problems. It's a domino structure of complications which eventually run out of control. And it's running out of control. That's what's going on, all right? And then Winston Churchill, and I have a feeling maybe a year ago, 
I shared this quote, but I'm going to do it in again because it's so appropriate right now. Those who fail to learn from history are doomed to repeat it. So the, these would be true. And now we come to good evidence, and this has been a little bit long. I'm just going to tell you this one quick thing. I went to Starbucks to do writing. I did two hours of writing. It was great. I ran into our ex um, weatherman here in Los Angeles, Fritz Coleman, and he bought me a hot chocolate. So that was nice. And we chatted. That's everyday good evidence. But when I got to my car, I had so many on my computer and this and that and books to pack into my back. I put the chocolate, hot chocolate on my roof and I got in the car and I started to drive. And I'm driving out of this Bob's Big Boy parking lot with Starbucks and this guy slows down and he starts waving at me. He's in front of me so I can't turn and his window goes down and then my window goes down and he goes, your roof, your roof. And I went, oh my God. And I jumped out of the car and that hot chocolate was still standing upright on the roof of my car. And I yelled to him, oh my God, I've done this before. Thank you so much. And he yelled back, me too. I've done it also. And that was just a delightful moment of good evidence. All right, this was packed today. And this week is going to be packed as well. And I am going to throw the runes for the weekly runes. And I will be back and upload that in a few hours. It's really early here. It's 8.30 a.m. Oh my God, here's Petey. Let me see if I can catch him. Hey, Petey. You gonna turn around and say hi? That's his back end. Come here. Come here. Show everybody your beautiful face. Come here, Pete. Petey. He wants, he likes the printer. Come here, Pete. Everybody's got to see your beautiful face on Monday. There he is. There's my boy. Okay. All right. I'll see you later. The hair's still growing in. Um, people who are running into me aren't really saying anything about it, like they're not even noticing it. Um, I'm going to consult with um, a specialist who helps people transition. I haven't felt like coloring it. I have the materials here. I'm kind of just in this grand experiment, and I almost feel like it's going along with life transition you know i'm in a life transition and i think this might be part of it and um it's kind of fun uh to test my comfort zone okay it's kind of fun all right so i'll see you later i'm going to change tops and colors so they don't look alike and it's a different video and peace and blessings uh go out and um cheer up somebody today. Make some good evidence, okay? And make some good trouble, which is not original. All right, see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.